Welcome back to the Humankind game. I'm Jomo Pixel, and today we're taking a look at another new culture. However, this time it's an ancient era culture, so I should be unlocking it fairly quickly, but as always, I'll be cutting out the boring bits in between. Let's jump through and have a look at the juicy detail as- Oh, I missed these nuts. As soon as I can get these nuts and get through to the next era, which actually, as luck would have it, should hopefully be very soon. Okay, well, I'm kind of not really in the best starting position, so I might just remind me later as I just explore a little bit more of the coastline, because I think our culture is gonna want a little bit of coastal real estate. Are you serious? Do you, dude, it didn't have to be that way. Okay, I think we've hung about long enough now. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's do it. So, if I scroll through, hopefully they're not taken. Oh my god. No! <sighs> I was a moron. Let's, do, let's just move through quickly this time. Boom. Outpost. Down. Fast. Not mucking. About. Go, go, go. Yes. Speed run. Speed start. I like it. Okay, there's a growth star, and you know what? I am taking absolutely zero chances. Here are the Corallans. The sea is richer than any field, and boy, do they live up to that. Bounty of the sea is their trait, and for the rest of the game, it will be providing us with plus two food on coastal water and plus one food on lakes. Their emblematic quarter or unique district is the Net Weaver. It's built along the coastline, but not in the water. It provides a uh, plus three industry at the cost of minus 10 stability. It counts as a maker's quarter though, but it provides plus five food per adjacent coastal water. This is interesting because unlike really almost any other culture in humankind, take a look through this list, none of them are the same in that they benefit from being built next to the water but not in it, right? Most of these are forts or standard districts like farmers quarters or this is essentially a science district. We have one harbour but really this is a very unique concept for a district because it requires to be built next to the water but not on it. Uh, we also have the envoys, which are essentially just a worse Harappan runner. Uh, we lose five, uh, sorry, three combat strength. However, we do gain the ability to heal outside of friendly territory, but we don't have the faster movement through uh, forests that the runners provide. Sorry, it's actually only two combat strength difference, so not quite as bad, but still definitely enough to lose some fights. So we won't be punching anybody with our envoys, but hopefully we can get some good coastal territories and really take advantage of the Corallans, who are an ancient Peruvian culture, I believe, from around three to 4,000 years ago. 3,000, I think, sounds or feels about right. Um, I suppose you will be a city then, seen as you're my only option. Cool, all right, here's Corral, our capital city. Uh, we can get a district down here, which will eventually have access to hopefully a good number of coastal tiles. Uh, however, in the first instance, I think we should probably go for the pottery workshop, get our influence generation up a bit, fuel a little bit more expansion, and then focus in on building up the homeland. Now that the, um, the old pottery workshop's out the way, I could start laying some foundations for my district. However, as I say, it doesn't really come online until we get harbors, because uh, for those who don't know, you need harbors to actually start exploiting these coastal tiles. And this district by itself, as you can tell if I build it here next to some potential coastline, doesn't actually provide any food until you have your harbors down. So what's probably a better bet for me is to actually just build a normal industrial quarter here to build up my industry so that I can get my future harbor and net weaver online a little bit quicker. Uh, and again, in this territory, if I want actual uh, coastal tiles, right, these coastal water tiles, lighter blue, of course, than these ocean tiles, then I'm going to want to actually settle this territory back around this way somewhere because these I can tell are all coastal, whereas these ones are not. Plop this one down here next to some nice coastal tiles. Fantastic. 
Uh, we do have a wanderer in this one as well, none other than Lake Hillier itself. So it might be a good idea to stick around these coastal tiles too and try and exploit them with our beautiful Netweaver district. So I'll just keep this unit floating about. Uh, connecting this die will give me a little bit of extra industry. So while we're waiting to research harbor, I may as well do that. It's a suboptimal placement at first by quite a bit, but I'm hoping it will pay dividends when it comes to building our district. I'm putting a lot of eggs into the district basket. Let's hope it pays off. Alrighty, I think I've got time for one more industrial district around these mountains, and then we'll start setting up for our unique and hopefully get it off without a hitch. Well, this feels bad for you. <laughs> Looks like my upgraded scouts are doing well after all, because of course, even though they're relatively weak by themselves, they are just an upgraded version of the traditional scout. So when it's scout v scout, I come out relatively evenly matched, as you can see there. In fact, oh, if it, if it wasn't going to take me 10 turns to ransack this right next door to me, I would absolutely do it. But I think we'll run away from here and consider ourselves lucky to have lived at all. All right, let's get the Netweaver set up now preemptively here. It's only going to provide three industry at first, but it will be useful. I think we should also probably attach an adjacent territory to this city, really. So let's hoover up this one. Boom. Will give us another good opportunity for a net weaver when it comes time. Boom. I believe that is my harbors now unlocked. I'll claim this one for its very poor coastal connection, but it's still connected. <laughs> no, but really crucially, now we have the harbors. So. I can build the Netweaver, but also use these beautiful looking harbors nearby. So the Netweaver's going there. I don't think it matters too much where the harbor goes, but I really want to get that plus 39. And it looks like it's going to force... Oh, okay. So you can actually see which tiles it's going to start working. And you can tell that actually where I'm building the Netweaver at the moment is only going to benefit from one adjacency. But if I can build it here, I can potentially benefit from so much more. So let's actually cancel its current production. Build the harbor there. It's going to exploit these five. We want to build our district here. So let's chain toward it. It counts as a maker's quarter, so I suppose we could chain out there with a mate. No, actually, let's go out there with food because we need food. All right. So we'll do a little bit more setup, get the harbor online, get the connections going so that we can build out here. Here's an early fight I can win. So while I'm down here, I may as well see ya. Oh my goodness, this territory is dieville and everyone is giving me even more industry. My city's now receiving plus 20. There's yet another one here that I'll be able to connect next turn. This is absolutely br- Oh my god, there's another one here too. Get out. Get out. Okay, boom. There we go. So, in this instance, I have ignored most of the uh, industrial habits of the district and instead absolutely yeeted it out onto the coastline where you can see it's going to be receiving plus 25 food from all of these wonderful adjacent coastal tiles just look at that that is actually brilliant fantastic right boom there it is the ultra combo set up here 27 food being extracted out of this net weaver that is wonderful what i would like to try and do Firstly, here in the capital again, is replicate this over here, right? Another harbor down, another one of these netweavers here, right? Basically just queue up that and do that. Boom, boom, boom. But then also I'd like to see how the culture fares in a more uh, industrial capacity. And I was thinking maybe in this territory here, if I could make this into a city, which I can do next turn, then I could try and build one more catered around industry and see if we can get some extreme yields there as well. I am going to remind me later on that bad boy. <laughs> Absolutely remind me later. Uh, grab masonry and continue on through. Now we should have enough. Yeah, I mucked around a little bit, but boom. Here's my next city. I might just attach that territory immediately so we know what we're dealing with, right? So we've got five pop. We're not starving. Looking pretty good. 
Let's try now and see what kind of yields I can get. You can see I've already got some harbors online. So these tiles are being extracted. Uh, the best balanced position would be a plus 10 plus 7, which is actually very good, right? That's a really great base yield without having to cater to any adjacency bonuses except for that harbor precondition. I don't need to build any other districts though. One harbor can activate all of the coastal tiles that I need. And this district provides me with a 17 yield. That's pretty good. But if I spin it around this way, can I do anything greater? Just thinking it is a maker's district. You know, probably not. So let's settle for the plus 10 food. And then this time let's surround it with say, two other makers districts and see what it can handle. And just to really pump the city along, I'm gonna turn these envoys, thank you brave boys for serving us well, uh, into populations here. We're now at 11 pop. It's gonna need a little bit of rebalancing. Two turns away there, okay. That's fine. It'll starve a little bit, but not too bad. This poor unit has just been trying to get into Steeler City, but it just cannot. So we'll have to let that slide for now. So I'll just convert these populations into money slash industry. That will free up a bit of space so the city can continue to grow and hopefully make this even stronger. However, of course, we do have space for another Netweaver and look, we can get it right on the border. Oh, that is juicy. That is juicy and that will allow us to just continue to chain building districts over here too. However, of course, a better spot would ideally be somewhere up here. But you know what? Because I can get that online really quickly, I think that's worth doing. So I'll queue one of them up next, and then we'll work on holy sites and stuff down, down the line once we get this really core foundation in place. If you're wondering, by the way, I really like calendar into domestication. That lets you improve all your resources. And then going carpentry into fishing. Domestication is optional if you don't do or don't have horses, but it's worth doing for the science game that horses give you. Otherwise, just brrr, beeline through to fishing, get your harbors, activate your coastal tiles, and then build your wonderful, wonderful net weavers. Oh, and boom, the capital just finished its second one. Look at that, 20 food and three industry out of there too. And if we build an industrial quarter next to it, we could potentially get some future scalings if we change cultures, right? Es especially um, thinking maybe like someone in the later game, well, I mean, the contemporary era is out of the question, but even just the Mayans would be wonderful to help us build on this if we had any rivers in our territory. Yes, we do. Nice little quarter around there potentially maybe even in this territory, or oh, it's a little off to the side. Bring some population in, and then fire them out for a holy site to save our stability and allow us to continue growing. Thank you for your service, much appreciated. And we might as well double down, improve our harbor improvements, get our all of our foodie improvements online actually maybe also get some extra foodie jobs in here, double down on that food strength, seeing as it seems like for us in this case at least, the district's real benefit has been that Wampa plus five food from adjacent and active, obviously, coastal tiles. Do the same in this city, just get some of its vital infrastructure in place, maybe also an extra job for some foodies. I'm gonna move through as the Corallans again because I think they're just so much fun. Why not keep up the good times? And speaking of keeping up the good times, let us build a really useful religion and get even more food from coastal water because why not? I forgot to change its name. I mean, just look at how prosperous my cities are. I can barely fill the number of jobs I've got. Heaven forbid if I use my agrarian ability, look, it just surges me into, <laughs> into absolute population overload. I really cannot keep up here with just the sheer amount of growth and interest and industry and, and everything that's pouring into these cities. This is outstanding and really it is thanks to that absurd district. I think the the Karalans really seem to me like the Harappans of the sea with a little bit of an extra industry bonus that maybe just pushes them over that limit and actually makes them even better than the Harappans. Of course, providing you have 
somewhat reasonable access to coastal tiles, but you've seen me in this video transport and transform these relatively average outposts into really high performing administrative centers. I mean, look at the yields on these tiles for goodness sake. Plus 27 food total on the net weaver. You can see 25 food and three industry pumping out of it. It's really nuts, right? These coastal tiles as well, fantastic thanks to my religion, but also a strong industrial base, right? Don't forget that unique district, that net weaver does also provide me with a little bit of industry, just making everything that even more faster, right? And of course, it counts as a maker's quarters, so you can get some adjacency bonuses going on too. Thank you very much for joining me for this um, another mod spotlight, looking at another culture in humankind. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please do consider sticking around and subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time.